then there is strip points grid over object now it's we're getting to some serious stuff here mm -hmm. what kind of object should we use let's okay i will just quickly do something here Okay, yeah, let's say you have this kind of weird shape and you want to drape points over it. That's the tool for it. Go back to our created uh, toolbar and let's do it. Drape points grid over objects. Wait, let's go into perspective mode. Okay, so now if we click I rarely use that to be honest. I mean, I have to be, to be frank. I I really never use this thing. But auto spacing, okay. I haven't. I don't know exactly what spacing is five. I guess it's the the, the, the distance between the points. Auto mat auto detect maximum depth is I guess is about the precision. Let's let's see. Um, drag a window to create points okay let's drag a window and wow that was quick and let's go back what if I drag a window this way so it depends on your on the view direction that's quite interesting that's really interesting so I could do this oh sorry interesting or if I go on top view and that's that's very interesting actually you see that I didn't <coughs> it didn't repeat the change the change of the viewport but it repeated my my action my command of creating the points that's that's super useful uh, in rhino that it doesn't certain commands will not repeat it with when i right click the only problem now is how to go back again you can click here or you can just type it in sometimes you want to undo the view for example i have my view like this and i and I think, ah, oh, that's so cool. And then suddenly I rotate it and I think, ah, I, follow, I lost my view. You can do undo view. And then you go, it goes back to the latest camera position. Now, control set, go back. And there are more, there's more stuff. Point clouds, this is basically, uh, it creates a point cloud. So before we created a point, a point grid and it, basically created um, a block so if you can remember this thing that basically creates a block which is not really good to see it's funny it's a bit annoying uh, maybe if I put this on a different color yes that works So this is basically a block. I can select all the points with one click, basically. And I can remember this multiple points is creating a lot of single points. And now if I want to create a point cloud, it's just by basically clicking here and select the points. And then the points are a group or a cloud if you want. And with this one, you can add and remove points. So if I right click, I can remove points. Did that work? Select point cloud, okay. Select points to remove. Press enter, yeah, that worked. Okay, so that gives me point cloud and then yeah, you can add points of course. Mark ellipse 
hyperbola or parabola foci, the focus of a ellipse, for example. That's interesting that it's in here because, again, this is something I never, I never draw ellipses, really, very seldom. But yeah, I mean, there you have it. So I have a, an ellipse. And basically what it actually shows already is it shows you that there was some well that you saw this foci here and that's basically what you get with that it gives you this focal points could be quite handy again never used it but see here here we are I I learned so much again this is also a really cool tool I jumped over it before sorry but that actually extracts all the points from objects so for example I have my box and I use this thing and it gives me all the points it actually makes a copy of the point of the, the points which define the box but if I delete my box I still have my points here yeah quite cool uh, just created a quick quick another model and just want to show you what happens if I use this uh, thing on, on 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 a very complex surface maybe let's have first look on on what so if we extract points here then we get actually quite a funny result and it's because these are all points it's all control points to which control that surface so you can actually if you click here if you select that object and click here show control points then it actually gives you all these control points and but you can move these <clears throat> that's what you get when you click this thing okay just just to conclude this tutorial let's have a quick very quick look into grasshopper and don't be afraid it's actually not that difficult so we start grasshopper and here you have again toolbars a lot of toolbars but here are parameters so points in here are exactly similar important as in Rhino itself so how does point work in Grasshopper so I for example if you go for here there is where points are the initial kind of a building component is in here in parameters because you can actually have a container we'll call it a container which can store a point or a list or several points let's let's make it very slowly you can hover over this and just pull it down just click and pull it down or if you double click into that space here and then enter search it says enter search keyword and then try point I can also select it from that list because sometimes it's faster to most of the time if you know the command it's faster to actually type it in instead of going through here and it's basically similar to the command line but it's even more uh, intuitive because it's just double click wherever you are in your script okay now I have these two things I only need one and it's if I right click I can rename it if I want point or points and I can if I right click in here I could set multiple points I can set one point or multiple points and remember that's what we did before we set one point or multiple points and if I set multiple points it again asks me the same thing so I can type it in I can type in another one 
20, 20, 100. I can type in, or I can just place it. And then maybe 300, 20, 10. It doesn't really matter. And then whenever I, it's same as what we did before. Whenever I stop, want to stop, I just press enter or right click, right click. Then these points are stored in Grasshopper. If this is on, if these are clear, if this is on, clicked here you can actually then move these points around and they're still stored here and what it does it's so if we click on this panel here we can actually look into that container and now if I click on that here on this small knob and pull it out and connect it here then it shows me all the coordinates so you see the first point was zero 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 second was 20 20 100 and then I placed some random points and then I placed the last one here and then I moved some of them if you select this again you can actually see and how this is changing and you see which point that is So that is one way to work with points and of course there are a lot of uh, a lot of options you can do with it but basically you have these stored in here you have the coordinates stored in here another way to create points in Grasshopper is to actually construct them so you can construct a point by um, using this kind of tool here and it asks you for for these coordinates. So basically what the same what we does we do here in Rhino, typing point and then typing the coordinates, we can actually create a point. At the moment it's it's set to zero zero zero. So actually when you hover over this uh, over the coordinate, the x coordinate, y and z coordinate, you see that it has stored the number zero. But you can change that. You can actually change that with either a number, an integer, with a float number, a slider, or a panel. So for example, I could just right click here and set an integer. Hoppala. Set an integer. Mm. Okay, so now I have stored a 10 here and now let's turn these off. Now if I place that number 10 into the set then you see that my, my point moved. Can't see it properly, let's turn off the grid. So my point moved along the x-axis. I could put for y. I could put a, a number here, a float number. So I could, for example, say twenty point two. And a slider, a slider gives me the opportunity to select a range or select a number from from with from a range of numbers. And if I double click on that slider, this window opens, and I can change it either to float numbers, uh, integers, and even numbers or odd numbers never tried this actually it's interesting for example I could say the maximum is here 100 my minimum is minus 100 
the range is 200 then. And now I have a slider which goes from minus 100 to, to 100. And I can place it here. And you can see that my, I can, I, I can move my point along this. Yeah, so I have this. Um, or you can also place a number in the panel that also works. That also works if you don't want to use this. Of course, you can have a slider everywhere. And you can use the same number of the slider everywhere if you want. You can copy things, just control copy, control paste, and paste another one and have different sliders. And you can control them all individually. So that's a cool thing. You can also then deconstruct a point but that might go a bit far but let's have a, let's have a look so if i connect this here i have my point i want to deconstruct the point i mean this hasn't i mean it doesn't do much really but now if i would add a panel here it would actually output the number of the coordinate the the coordinate value see minus so for example I go to 100 then I have 100 minus 100 and so on you can also have multiple values in one coordinate so think about it what could it do if you do that if you add multiple numbers into one slot Let's do that. For that, there's an um, object called data. Data. And in data, I could set data item. Oops. Either one item or multiple items. Oh right click multiple items and I could say 200 152 okay now if I connect a panel here I see this different values and if I put them here, it suddenly it creates four points. So it creates basically four points where the y, the x and the y coordinate is the same, and the z coordinate is this list. And you can of course plug in more. I will not I will not go further because it's gonna to be too much for this first tutorial but I, th I think you get the point I hope I hope you get the point yeah I hope you get points <laughs> anyway next time we talk about lines and maybe curves hopefully and Actually, this whole section. Let's try to cover this whole section here. Okay, see you next time.